What's going on internet? In this week's Python tutorial we're going to be learning about, you guessed it, yet another type of object. And this week we're talking about the set. Today we're going to be talking all about the set, which is a new type of object that we're learning about now in Python. And I promise, promise I'm going to resist with every fiber of my being from making another corny tennis joke. I won't do it. Uh, anyway, what a set is, is it's a computer's way of managing and storing a whole bunch of data in one place that makes it easy for retrieval. You might be saying, hey, doesn't that sound exactly like what an array is? It's not. It turns out sets and arrays are two very different things in Python. They each have very distinct properties that would give you uh, advantages and disadvantages and would lead you to want to prefer to use one over another in different scenarios. So what makes a set different from an array? The first important distinction is that all elements in a set are unique. So you cannot store the same object in a set twice. If you try to uh, put an object in the set that's already in the set, it won't update the set. So there are never any duplicates in a set, whereas with an array, you can store the same object however many times you would like. The second difference is that arrays can have an order well as a, whereas a set does not preserve order at all. So if you think about when you're building an array, you can append items or indices in a specific order to, uh, and that order will be reflected in the array and the array will preserve that order. In a set, as you add elements to a set, your order will not be preserved. Maybe it will, maybe it will be. Most likely all of your elements are going to get jumbled around. Why is that? This has to do with a process that is called hashing. What exactly is hashing? Uh, you don't have to worry about the details of how it works. Uh, there's a whole class at MIT that teaches you exactly how that happens. But uh, what you do need to know is that hashing is Python's method of basically organizing the elements in a set such that you can easily retrieve data back out of a set. And that is one of the main advantages of a set, is that you can check the membership of a set very quickly in constant time. So let's say I had an object, an integer number 5 in the set, and I wanted to see if it was in the set. I can check to see if it is in the set almost instantly because of the hashing process. It's not at all dependent on the size of the set. So whether the set has one element in it or 10,000 elements, whether the 5 is in there or not is is always the same uh, length of time to retrieve that value, that true or false value. Whereas with a list, if I want to check to see if an element is in the list, I need to walk down every single index of the list until I find what I'm looking for. Or if I don't find what I'm looking for, in which case I look through every single index and then uh, got to the end and concluded, hey, it's not there. And the lookup time of a list grows linearly with the length of the list. So that is what hashing does for a set, is it makes lookup extremely, extremely fast. So I think that's enough said. Let's get to work with using some sets. Now I have the editor open so we can explore our exciting new data type, which is the set. So let's say I want to create a set of all of the current friends that I have. So you declare a variable with some kind of name, just as we've always done with an equal sign. And then to declare an empty set, you would start by doing a curly Q brackets just like that, a beginning and end. And this initializes an empty set. And there we go, I've successfully created the set of all of the current friends that I have. This can also equivalently, equivalently be done uh, by using the keyword set with two parentheses after it. Uh, and this is actually preferred by Python if you're going to use an empty set because it thinks that you're using a dictionary if you're just doing uh, curly Q brackets a lot of times. So anyway, let's say we want to make a set of all of the foods that I'm currently thinking about eating, right? So declare a variable called food and start with the curly Q brackets and we'll start listing stuff. So let's say uh, pizza, um, pasta, and just like with an array, you're going to put the elements in and you're going to separate them with commas. Now there are some restrictions as to what you can put in a set. For example, you cannot put an array within a set. You'll see that this will actually yell at me uh, because a list is of an unhashable type. Uh, you don't have to worry about what unhashable means. That just is um, uh, hashing is basically how sets uh, order, not order, but um, place their elements so you can get a very fast lookup time. You also cannot place a set inside of another set. So again, it'll yell at me. But any other type of uh, data type is fair game. So any string, any integer, uh, like stuff like that are all good to put inside of sets. 
So that's what that looks like. The first operation that I want to show you on sets is the add operator, which is exactly as you might think. It just adds uh, an element into a set. And this is another one of our object-oriented commands. So you would start by typing the name of the object that you want to mutate. In this case, this is our set, which is called food, with a dot. And then we want to put an add there. And then inside parentheses, we can add the element that we want um, to you know, put in there. So let's say I want banana. And then when we go to print food, now we end up with a set that has banana added into it. And you can see that when we print it, order is not preserved. And that has to do with uh, the hashing process, which again, as I said before, you don't have to worry about how it works because it's kind of complicated. But that's basically just how sets are able to look up very quickly whether an item is in the set or not. And that's why order is not preserved. The other thing is all of the elements in sets need to be unique. So let's say, for example, I have food, which uh, now in this case has uh, pizza, pasta, uh, 78, 74. If I want to add pasta again, it doesn't end up changing the set. The reason being is that all of the elements in a set are unique. So if pasta was already in there and I tried to add it, nothing really happens. Now we can also do a remove, uh, which pretty much also does exactly what you might think, which removes the element from a set. So pasta uh, is now gone. Now there's another one that takes elements out of a set, so this one's remove. The other one is called discard. And on the surface, it looks like they do the same thing. So they'll both take an element out of the set. The difference is with discard, if you try to remove an element that's not there, so let's say I want to uh, remove pepper, right? And I, hold on, uh, let's just fix this. If I want to remove pepper but it's not there, nothing happens because discard will ignore any request to remove an element of a set that's not already in the set. However, if you use the remove keyword instead, it will throw an exception because it will it'll tell you that pepper is not in that set. Uh, see, key error tells you that pepper does not exist in that set, so uh, don't even bother trying to remove it. And there's a whole bunch of uh, different keywords that you can use. Uh, this is kind of like, so like for example, we can use clear and that'll just uh, give us an empty set back again. See, we have an empty set. And that's just a, a handful of operations to get you started with sets. But there's more cool stuff that we can do with them. Now if we have two sets, there are ways that we can merge them. So let's say, for example, we have our original food set, but now we have a new set called drink and includes elements such as water and soda. What we can do is we can use the update keyword to add the, uh, the food or the drink set into the food set. So food.update and then in parentheses, we'll put the name of the other set, which is drink. So then when we print food, it has mutated the original food set to include all of the elements that were originally in drink. So you see down here that soda and water appear in no particular order, again because sets don't preserve our order. A very similar operation is the union uh, set, but the difference between union and update is that union will yield a new set. So for example, um, I need to declare a new variable. So if I say um, yummy is the name of my new set so instead of food.update we're going to say food.union and then when we print yummy we're going to again get something that looks kind of similar this looks like it's the same result again ignore the order order doesn't matter with a set the difference between using the union keyword and the update keyword is that update mutated the original instance of food to add in these drink elements and then we printed that Instead, what Yummy does is instead of mutating food or drink, those stay the same, but now we've created a new set called Yummy, which is the union or combination of both of them. And to prove that, if we print food, we can see that it's still the same exact set that we originally had, so it doesn't have any of our, our drink elements in there. We can also use a set difference, and this is for sets that have elements in common. So let's say our drink set also had the number 78 and 74 in it, right? Um, so then if we do a set difference, so if we say um, uh, yummy uh, equals food.difference drink, so use that difference keyword. Again, this won't mutate any of our original instances, but what it will do is it will give us all of the elements that are in food that are not in drink. So it includes pizza and pasta, but neither 78 nor 74 because those are in common. So then if I, to show you another example, if I remove that 
uh, 78 then we can include it back in our difference again because this wasn't common between the two of them only 74 is common one of the most useful features of the set which is something i mentioned before is that sets have extremely fast lookup time and that is because they are hashable data types and what that means is we can use the in keyword to very quickly and efficiently see if an element is contained within the set so for example I'm going to use an if statement real quick which we haven't learned we'll learn in a future topic but just for now don't worry about exactly what they do so let's say if the element 78 is in our set food right uh, if that's so then we want to print hooray and so when we run this what we'll get is that it prints hooray because it used the in keyword to search the set food for 78 and it found it in there and it printed hooray and this was a very fast process now to be fair this also works on arrays so let's say uh, let's say drink was an array um, and we'll say if 74 in drink and this will work kind of similarly and again this looks like it was very fast uh, because this array is very short now when you're dealing with very very large amounts of data I'm talking about thousands of elements in an array or a set you will actually start to see a very considerable difference between the lookup time between an array and a set where a array the lookup time of an array grows with the length of the array because the in operator needs to walk down linearly down the entire array until it finds the element it's looking for in this case it's 74 and the worst case scenario is if that element isn't in the array because it needs to look through the entire array to verify that it's not there before concluding that it's not however with the set since it's hashable it already has an expectation of where to look so it can look up in constant time which means no matter how large the set is it doesn't really affect the the time of the lookup it still happens in a fraction of a second whether there's four elements in the set or four thousand and that's why sets are so beautiful because you can use them for fast lookup time so if you're using large amounts of data and you need to check membership really quickly the set is the way to go and just like a lot of other data types in python sets also support casting as long as the data types that you're trying to convert are compatible so you can for example convert a list or a tuple into a set and or convert a set back into a list or a tuple so what that looks like so I'll take print and see drink is my array or list here so I can uh, cast as a set my drink array just like that and we can print it and now we have drink was turned into a set so what Python has done is it's taken all of the elements in this array and it has hashed them so now we have a really quick lookup with our new set object with that contains all of the elements from drink and I'll even show you what this looks like in reverse we can also take a set and turn it into an array slash list again uh, array and list are words that are used interchangeably so if I cast the food array as a list uh, then what this has done is it's taken this set and it's uh, cast it as an array and remember that order will not be preserved again because it's a set even when you're converting back into a list because it didn't have any order to begin with one last thing that I want to show you is the frozen set which is extremely similar to a set uh, and the way you create one is after you have first created a, a set um, so, such as my food set what we can do is uh, I'll initialize a new one so I'll call frozen food like this and you use the keyword frozen set see it turns green to show that Python recognizes it and just as if you were casting a set into a data, different data type uh, you would cast food which is a normal mutable set into a frozen set and the only difference between a regular set and a frozen set is that a frozen set is immutable so you can't you can't change this frozen food set by adding any extra elements or taking anything away uh, the reason why you would want to use this uh, one of the main reasons at least is that the keys of dictionaries which is a data type that we'll be learning about next week cannot be mutable so if you want to use a set in the key of the dictionary it needs to be a frozen set but um, anyway that's just pretty much what that is and then we can go ahead and we can print uh, frozen food and that just gives us uh, what looks like another set but it's here to remind you that this is indeed a frozen set so it's immutable so for example if I want to say uh, frozen food dot add uh, french fry I can't do that it'll yell at me it says frozen set has no attribute add 
because frozen sets are immutable. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.